RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Enjoyment here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, transcribed, written by Jack Douglas and Marvin Fisher, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Janine Roos, and Whitfield, the orchestra under the direction of Skip Martin, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. First, a word from RCA Victor. The concert hall comes right into your living room when you play new orthophonic high fidelity recordings on a Victrola high fidelity phonograph. For example, Listen to this beautiful selection from the New World Symphony by Dvorak. Familiar, isn't it? But now you can hear it as it's never been heard before. RCA Victor has just released a new orthophonic recording of the New World Symphony, conducted by the maestro himself, Arturo Toscanini, with the NBC Symphony Orchestra. It brings you complete range, brilliant sound, and the mastery of Toscanini's baton. And you can hear it best on the instrument designed to play it best, RCA Victor's high-fidelity Victrola phonograph. Only RCA Victor, with the world's most experienced recording engineers, brings you a table model instrument with a professional-type Olsen design 8-inch speaker, a silent three-speed changer, a perfectly balanced pickup and amplifying system, all in a cabinet little more than a foot high. For hi-fi at its thrilling best, hear Toscanini's recording of the New World Symphony on a high-fidelity Victrola table phonograph by RCA Victor, first in recorded music. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris. Bill Harris, who is usually the picture of robust health, isn't feeling so chipper today. He woke up this morning with a pain in his side. The pain has persisted, so he and Elliot have gone down to the Encino steam baths to see if a heat treatment won't help it. Ooh. Curly? Huh. Well, I don't want to get personal, but me and all the other guys in this steam room haven't got any clothes on. <laughs> What about it? What's that thing you're wearing? <laughs> Look, Elliot, my mother taught me to be modest <laughs> at all times. Yeah, but aren't you overdoing it? What is that thing you're wearing? I got it at an army store. <laughs> it's a surplus wigwam. <laughs> well, I don't want to spoil your day, Hiawatha. But it's a little saggy around the shores of Gitchigumi. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Hmm? Oh, there it is. That's a... Oh, I have pain in my side again. What's the matter, Curls? You getting worse? Yeah. Ooh. Hey, Ellie, it feels like somebody stuck a knife. Oh. Hey, Curly, you better get out of here and go right home. Yeah. This pain ain't getting any better. Come on. All right. Now, Phil, you keep that ice pack on your side And we'll see if the pain doesn't ease up Well, Alice, I can't just lie here like You're not using ice cubes in there, are you? <laughs> I told you time and time again Until we get a box that makes a dozen Every five seconds to stop using the ice cubes <laughs> Alice, I got too many things to do. I... Mm. 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 There it goes again. Oh, honey, this is getting serious. Those pains aren't natural. I'm going to call the doctor. Look, Alice, you're going to do nothing of the kind. It's nothing. Besides, I've never had a sick day in my life, and I'm going to be all right. I wouldn't take any chances, Curly. It could be appendicitis. That's impossible because I've already had my appendix removed, and I can prove it. 
I've got an incision three and a half feet long. <laughs> three and a half feet long? They took out my tonsils at the same time. <laughs> Phil, why do you tell stories like that? Well, it's true. Then why doesn't the scar show? Because the doctor was very clever. He not only was a surgeon, he also did French weaving. <laughs> You know, Curly, I've been reading a medical book lately, and the way these pains keep repeating, you've got all the symptoms of arterial multiple occlusions of the diaphlipithudia. I have? Are you sure? I'm almost positive. You better do something right away. But what? Call up Clyde McCoy and see if he can play taps. <laughs> Fine. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I got a little pain, so what? It'll go away. Now, nobody's going to talk me into being sick, so Anybody you might have... home? I've run the groceries. Uh, hi, hi Julius. Julius. Oh, Mr. Lewis. Oh, Miss Faith. Oh, Mr. Harry. Boy, do you look revolting. <laughs> what are you talking about? Who? You. Ooh, where'd you get those bags? Sleeping with your eyes in an egg cup? <laughs> <laughs> Harris doesn't feel very well. Well, Miss Faye, that was inevitable. After all, coming across the plains in a covered wagon takes its toll. <laughs> there ain't very many of his generation around anymore. They're all gone. General Grant? <laughs> Grover Cleveland? Kid. Buffalo Bill is gone? Kid. Stonewall Jackson? <laughs> Benjamin Franklin? Pinky Lee? That's the... <laughs> Look, Julius, I'm getting a little fed up with you making them cracks about me being so ancient. I'm not that old. Well, all I know is Miss Faye spent $20 getting rid of the mice around here, and then she found out it was your knees that was doing the squeaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you, Julius, you are a comical fellow. <laughs> You're another odd link letter. Wait a minute. <laughs> Look, Julius, why don't you just... Ooh. Mm. Oh. oh, there it goes again honey. What's the matter? Mr. Harris has a pain in his side What's he laying there for? Do you realize that a very short distance from here Is the office of a very famous brain surgeon Dr. Calvelia Bruzio? Now why in the world should I call a brain surgeon? Oh, I don't know He might open up your head and get lucky <laughs> He isolated the influenza germ? How'd he do it? He just closed the door. <laughs> and, and, uh, by the way, Mr. Harris, when you go to see the doctor, get some x-ray pictures taken. Oh, oh, by all means. Yeah, he took an x-ray picture of me. You should see the inside of me, little body. At least 50,000 people have seen that picture. Oh, did he have it published in the medical journal? No, he sold it to the automobile club. It's now a shortcut to Lake Arrowhead. <laughs> kid. You see, after you pass my liver, you make a left turn around me clavicle. Left, kid. Then you're on Highway 66. But watch out, there's a speed trap between my kidney and Palm Springs. <laughs> that did it. Look, kid, I'm going to take no, you on a No, 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 please, Mr. Harris. Not in the laundry bag again. I can't stand another trip through the mango. Okay, then beat it. Get out of here. <laughs> what kind of kid is this? Mm. Now that pain in my side really hurts. You know what you need, Curly? You need something to take your mind off of this. Maybe if I told you a story or something. Okay, tell me a story. Tell me a story. Maybe Let's it see. might help. Let me see now. I know what I'll do to cheer you up. I'll read you something out of the paper, Curly. Hey, the obituary column is really <laughs> jumping to that. <laughs> you stop. Why should I want to read the obituary column? Why, Curly, 
If you're gonna go on a trip, there's nothing like knowing who the other passengers are. All right. <laughs> the ma- Ooh, my side. Did you ever, did you ever, did you ever kiss before? Did you ever, did you ever, did you ever whisper just once more? Did you tremble, did you tingle, did your heart begin to jingle like a pocket that was loaded full of dimes? Did you like it when you did it? If you did it, then admit it. Did you have such wonderful times? Did you ever, did you ever, did you ever get that thrill? Did you ever, did you ever, did you ever feel your heart stand still? I don't care who held you tightly. I don't care who saw you nightly or who shared your kiss. But did you ever, did you ever, did you ever love like Understand it. I've already taken two pain reliever pills, but I haven't helped. Them modern pills are nowhere. I better go back to that old reliable remedy that my grandmother used to use. <laughs> Dr. Kickapoo's old Indian elixir of alfalfa and juniper flavored octopus milk. <laughs> Boy, was it great. It could have become a wonder drug, but they couldn't find anyone with nerve enough to milk an octopus. <laughs> I thought that'd get more than that. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, there it goes again. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, hello, son. Hello, Dad. Ooh. 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 <laughs> What happened, son? Alice doing the cooking again? <laughs> oh, I don't know what's wrong with me, Dad. I got this this terrible pain in my side. Yeah, that's the trouble with women today. They just won't give a man plain food. They're always cooking up something fancy. Ooh! Ooh! Well, that's the way I feel about it, son. <laughs> You know what we had for dinner last night? Another one of your mother's fancy dishes. She called it Rabbit Surprise. <laughs> rabbit Surprise. The part I got looked bewildered. <laughs> hey, Dad. What am I going to do about this pain? Well, it might not be a bad idea to ask your mother. She loves you, son. I, I know she does, Dad. Back the time when you were a little boy and you got down in the cellar and you ate all of those dried apples. Doctor said not to give you any water or you'd swell up and die. <laughs> Mother gave you all the water you wanted. <laughs> she loves you, son. <laughs> Don't forget to wire her some flowers for Mother's Day. No, no, I won't. Say, Dad, uh, let me ask you something. When I ate all of those dried apples, did I swell up? Like a Goodyear blimp, son. 
You'd have floated into the next county if it hadn't been for me. I stabbed you with an ice pick every hour on the hour. <laughs> I love you too, son. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I ought to be going along now. Well, wait a minute, Dad. You haven't told me what you thought I ought to do about this pain in my side. What oh, was that? Well, son, why don't you get in touch with Kate Smith? She's always nice to fall back on. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> That's all right, son. Any time. See, nobody seems to realize just how serious this thing might be. Except Alice, and she's taking it too seriously. I think I'll take another one of them pills and I'll... No, no, I won't. It might put me to sleep, and then Alice will call Dr. Rando, and... And, <laughs> and then Dr. Rando will take me to the hospital and, and operate on me. Oh, no, I mustn't go to sleep. I mustn't. I mustn't. I mustn't go to sleep. I mustn't. I mustn't. I can't. Dr. Rando wanted in surgery. Dr. Rando, in surgery, please. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where am I? What am I doing in this big white room? Why am I lying on this long white table? What are they going to do to me? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> now, hold on. Who are you? I'm your favorite doctor, Dr. Rando. And we're going to operate. See, I have my gloves on. <laughs> but, doctor, those are boxing gloves. <laughs> you're, you're wearing boxing gloves. Oh, stop nagging. <laughs> Now, let me see if I have everything for the operation. Oh, yes, there's my equipment, everything I need. A tennis shoes, lunch pail, toothbrush, <laughs> welding helmet, and my cigarette. <laughs> Cigarettes? Don't worry. They're wet-proof, wet-proof, wet-proof. <laughs> All right. Now, you wait a minute. Now, you listen to me, Doc. I didn't ask anybody to operate on me. I don't know how I got here, but there's one thing I do know. Nobody's going to touch me with a knife. Did you buzz to me, doctor? Yes, nurse. Nurse? This is my wife, Alice Faye. Alice, what are you doing here? Oh, you must have me mixed up with someone else. I'm a nurse. Alice, what's the matter with you? Don't you recognize me? I'm Phil. Phil Harris. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've heard of you. Somebody told me you were looking for a girl singer with your orchestra. I sing and dance a little on the side. Listen to this. Somebody batched on the wedding bell. Now nobody can get married. Oh, who stole the ding dong? <laughs> who stole the ding dong? <laughs> who stole the Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> What's all that business with the hips? What's the matter, Big Daddy? <laughs> Ain't you never heard of power steering? <laughs> sure, but watch it. <laughs> You're bending your curb feeler. <laughs> I don't understand this whole thing. Now, what am I doing here in this hospital? Who brought me here? I know I had a little pain in my side. Good evening, but... Dr. Rando. Oh, my colleague, Dr. Lewis. Elliot. Well, thank heavens that you're here. Now, Elliot, tell him this whole thing is a mistake. Tell him that I... There, 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 my good man. Doctor, I see our patient has a slight case of hysteriosis non coppus mentis, more commonly known as loss of faith in one's doctor. That's what I've got, Clyde. <laughs> Where do you get off to think that you're going to operate on tut, me? Tut, tut, 
Tut, tut. I'm quite qualified. Here's a book I wrote on surgery. You wrote a book on surgery? Let me see that book. Mm -hmm. How to perform a major surgical operation on the kitchen table. <laughs> or, mother, there'll be one less for dinner tonight. <laughs> You guys got the wrong pigeon. Hey, hold him, doctor. Hold him. Hey, nurse. Hey, let's have no violence here. Well, I guess we're ready to proceed with the operation just as soon as we get some relative to sign the release. Yes, in case something drastic happens to the patient. <laughs> something drastic? Oh, yes. We may look intelligent, but we goof all the time. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Dr. Arthur Rando. You will never get me to sign that paper, and what's more, you're not going to get anybody I know to sign it because I won't let them. I'd be glad to sign your paper, gentlemen. <laughs> Dad. Dad. You can't do this to me. Now, son, now, I, I know right at the moment you're frightened, but when the whole ordeal is over, you're going to be glad you went through with it. I hope it's a girl. <laughs> what? I'll wire you some flowers on Mother's Day. <laughs> Dr. Rando, I'll admit I'm stumped. He so am I. That's why I sent for the eminent German specialist, Dr. Ehrlich Guggenheim of Vienna. This should be he now. Anybody home? I brought the bandages. <laughs> Julius, Julius, you're going to operate? Yeah, wohl. <laughs> Good to have you aboard, Dr. Guggenheim, but, but where are your instruments? I don't got no instruments. <laughs> you don't got no instruments? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I brought this. The grocery store will never miss the bologna slicer. <laughs> Anybody, somebody, please help me, will you please? Yes, why isn't this patient ready for the operation? Well, I'm sorry, doctor, but the patient refused to disrobe. Well, Dr. Guggenheim, there's only one thing to do. We'll have to operate right through the flap in his wigwam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, allow me to assist, doctor. This is the part I like. Oh, nurse. Yes, doctor. Hey, nurse, we must be antiseptic. Paint the patient's little tummy. Okie dokie, doc. Oh, no, not nail polish. <laughs> Look, don't I even get an anesthetic? Chicken. <laughs> now lay back while I make a teensy weensy incision on your tumsy wumsy. <laughs> out first, doctor. Oh, I don't know. It all looks so good. <laughs> I take over the operation now, gentlemen. Nurse, hand me the stuff. Wait a minute. No nurse. I don't want no curb feeler handing you nothing. <laughs> I'll hand you the stuff. So where we begin? Clamp? Clamp? Zucha. Zucha. Scalpel. Scalpel. Hydrovascular cardiographic electric turbo injector impulse. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go put a couple more nickels to parking meter. Wait. Hey, you guys, look here a minute. I've been on this operating table long enough. Now, when are you going to finish anyway? There we are. There's the last stitch. You're all sewed up again. How long that take, nurse? Well, I'll take a look at the... Oh, good heavens. The clock is gone. The clock is gone? The clock is gone? The clock is gone. The clock is gone. Where is it? 
Oh, these things happen all the time. <laughs> hey, don't you worry about the clock. We can buy another one. You mean the clock? Oh, no. Oh, you can't do this to me. The clock. You can't do this to me. You can't do this. <laughs> Phil, Phil, huh? What? What's hey, the matter? Curly, Curly, you've been having a huh? nightmare. Can I get you a glass of water? Don't touch me, you double crosser. <laughs> or you either, Alice. They just operated on me in a hospital, and neither one of you raised a hand to help me. Phil, what's I... more, they sewed me up after the operation, and and they left the clock inside of me. <laughs> a clock? Yes. <laughs> No. no, don't you understand, Phil? The whole thing was just a dream. I'm telling you, it was not a dream. It was real. Oh, I give up. Come on, Ellie. There's no use arguing with him when he's like this. Yeah, oh, a clock. <laughs> See you later, Curly. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, sure. Of course it was just a dream. <laughs> It sure seemed real while I was dreaming it. <laughs> imagine, just imagine a couple of doctors leaving the clock inside of me. <laughs> That's rich. <laughs> leaving a clock inside when you just... just... <laughs> now if I can just figure out a way to wind it. Hey, Curly, you're looking mighty handsome today. I cut, Elliot, cut. I'm not lending you any more of Alice's hard-earned money. Well, you do me an injustice, pal. Well, what do you want, then? Well, I heard you got a terrific new secretary. And what a beauty. Then, uh, how about an introduction for an old pal? Absolutely. Elliot, meet my new secretary. Hey, that ain't a she. That's the new RCA push-button tape recorder. Yep, and it's the best secretary anyone could have. Why, with this wonderful tape recorder, a businessman can make complete records of important meetings, use it to practice speeches. It's a great investment. Phil's right. The new RCA push-button tape recorder is a good investment for business and for pleasure, too, because you can use it as a family album. Record the happy moments that'll be doubly precious years from now. Ask your dealer to demonstrate the low-cost RCA push-button tape recorder. This is Phil again. Accidents don't happen to the other fella. The chances you may take every day can make you a potential victim. You can't afford to be a careless driver, so drive carefully. Thanks, and good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Included in this program transcribed were Frank Nelson and Dick Legrand. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. This has been an NBC Radio Network presentation. Does your radio sound like this? Does the volume fluctuate? Is there an annoying hum? If your radio has any of these symptoms, the trouble may be a weak or worn out tube. So have your local service technician install dependable new RCA tubes. Experts will tell you RCA tubes give the best performance. Remember to hear Can You Top This, which follows John Cameron Swayze and the news, one of the regular features on the NBC Radio Network.